There have been a lot of comparisons made between homeworld and real world nations and systems of government. The most common comparison to make lately is between them and the Nazis. I'm sure none of you have ever encountered such a comparison before, but they are pretty common, I can assure you. Just to be clear, the sarcasm isn't because I don't see any value in such a comparison. I'm just kind of sick of hearing about it. That said, I've never really seen it as super valid, though. I've always seen more of the old Roman Empire in Homeworld than I have Nazi Germany. Specifically, Rome under the Second Triumvirate which was, for those who don't know, a system of government where there were, at the same time, multiple supreme leaders of the Roman Empire who, at least theoretically, had equal power, and it didn't do too well. It wasn't very successful. I mean, think about it for a second. Not only does that kind of describe the diamonds to a T, but there's a lot of similarities between their empire and the old Roman Empire. They're very conquest-driven. They have slave-like castes, Homeworld even seems to do most of its fighting on the ground with melee fighters, just like the Roman Empire did, despite the fact that they clearly have energy-based and projectile weapons. But most importantly, I think, especially for the comparisons that I'm making today, and to uh, really simplify things for the sake of time, the Roman Empire spread itself very thin. It expanded its territory very quickly and spread itself very thin, so much so that in order to retain its power, the Roman government had to impose strict order upon its subjects. There was the very real threat that if order was not maintained, if things devolved into chaos, that Rome's power structure would collapse. The Roman Empire is even known for very public means of execution of criminals, most notably, I think, and most famously, crucifixion, as such means of executing even relatively low-rung criminals helped to instill fear in the people and help maintain that ordered structure. This, I think, works as a clear analogy for public poofings and shatterings of gems who step out of line by the diamonds. And the reason for this comparison is to reiterate and provide more evidence for the old theory that the diamond authority functions the way that it functions, at least in part, because the diamonds are desperate to maintain their power. They are worried that if they lose even an inch of control by showing any level of weakness, that the magnitudes of gems beneath them might start to get ideas, and that eventually their power structure will collapse upon them. Like, I'm not saying that these Roman comparisons are the only ones that exist, that you can't compare Homeworld to any other real-world civilizations, but I do think the comparisons do exist, and the fact that they exist lends evidence to this particular theory. And now, I've made these comparisons, and I've made this overall point, because I want to talk about this scene here from the trial, where the mere suggestion that one of the other diamonds might have had something to do with Pink Diamond's death, which at the time we didn't know was fake, led to the two diamonds losing their shit. In fact, Yellow Diamond's reaction, while definitely an angry one, also seemed motivated by fear and desperation. She poofed both of the Zircons present, not just the one who had made the accusation, almost as if she was trying out of a sense of desperation to keep those words from leaving that room. If the diamonds are so desperate to maintain their power structure, it would make sense that she would behave that way. However, we've been seeing some pretty interesting stuff during the Diamond Days event, which makes me think that it might go a bit further than that. To preface this next part of the video, I want to remind you guys that I have talked a little bit recently about things that the show might introduce us to, some details about the diamonds that the show might introduce us to, which might help make their redemption a bit more palatable if it happens. I have also gone on the record saying that I don't think White Diamond will be redeemed. I think it's going to be the other two, or one, or the other of the other two, or none of them. White Diamond just seems far too alien for Steven to ever convince her to change her ways. And honestly, it's because I've been getting this sort of sense from the character that I've come to the rest of the conclusions that I've come to in regards to this particular video. Because after the recent episode, Together Alone, we got another instance of Yellow Diamond reacting in a very similar way to the way that she reacted back at the trial. When Connie seemingly convinced that she was safe 
as long as she was with Steven, asked Steven to dance and they accidentally fused into Stevani. Yellow Diamond reacted like this. too far even for you and she reacted this way in the context of white diamond's pearl who was standing in for white diamond at the ball that they were all attending reacting like this she was clearly displeased and if she was there to represent her diamond i think it's safe to assume that white diamond was not pleased by what happened either or at the very least won't be once she finds out. That is, of course, assuming that she didn't know as soon as her Pearl knew, but that's a whole other theory that I'm not even gonna get into on this channel today. As interesting as this is though, and as consistent as it is with that past scene from the trial, and as much as it seemingly serves as evidence for the idea that I presented earlier that the diamonds are desperate to maintain their power, the specific dialogue here has me thinking that there's more to it, and that there might be more to the situation than what we can see. It's not a new theory that White Diamond might be as powerful compared to the other diamonds as the diamonds are compared to other gems, but I do think that this line of dialogue presents evidence for that and even suggests something even more sinister, which may also serve to make the past behavior of the diamonds towards the gems beneath them a bit more palatable. Not entirely excusable, because they obviously still have some biases. Blue's behavior in Together Alone proves that, but more palatable and makes them more likely to be redeemed and more likely to be accepted by the fandom, if they are. If we go back and we look at the way that Blue and Yellow talk about White Diamond versus the way that White Diamond talks to and treats Pink Diamond, I still do believe that White Diamond favors Pink Diamond over the others. That while she punishes Blue and Yellow when they screw up, she doesn't treat Pink the same way, or if she does punish Pink, the punishments are comparatively far less severe. If this is true, then Blue and Yellow Diamond might have very real reasons to believe that if they screw up enough, White Diamond might kill them, just like they might kill a gem beneath them who screws up too badly. What I'm proposing here is that that particular line of dialogue, that suggestion that even Pink has taken things too far at this point in the midst of a very literal display of Homeworld's incredibly rigid, ordered, function-based structure. Isn't Yellow Diamond scolding who she thinks is Pink Diamond, it's her concern for who she thinks is Pink Diamond, in this case, Steven, obviously, that she is concerned that this person who she perceives as this person who she cares about is going to face a very severe punishment maybe even up to and including destruction. I mean, again, I remind you that while Blue and Yellow seem genuinely worried in this moment, White Diamond's Pearl, who again, is a proxy for White Diamond in the scene, seems very menacingly displeased. All of this together does suggest that White Diamond is the real threat here and that this may be something that triggers her wrath. So if Yellow Diamond and presumably also Blue Diamond, are worried about White Diamond's wrath, then maybe that's an explanation for why they punish gems beneath them so harshly. After all, we know from this same episode that, again, while she does have some biases, Blue Diamond at the very least cares about her pearl. She at the very least cares about that one gem that is beneath her. We know this because in Together Alone, we learn that Blue Diamond's pearl likes to draw, that Blue Diamond knows that, and lets her do it despite the fact that pearls aren't supposed to have desires of their own. I mean, hell, her grudge against Garnet specifically, the one major bias that she showed in that particular episode, might just be because this particular cross gem fusion fused in public in front of a whole bunch of gems from her court that she couldn't just dispose of, gems that she needed, a failure on her part which might have earned her punishment from White Diamond. And like, I'm not gonna say that this means that Yellow Diamond feels the same way, and I'm not gonna say that this means that either of the diamonds cares about all of the gems beneath them, or that if they do get redeemed, part of their journey won't have to be them getting over their expectation of other gems to fall into specific. And obviously there's stuff that they definitely have to answer for. Still, the Cluster 
I think comes to mind quickest designated roles. But I am suggesting that all of this suggests that one of the reasons why they act so harshly towards gems who step out of line is because they're worried about what might happen if they fail to punish such gems, word gets back to white and white takes action instead. Maybe white will destroy even more of their gems than they would, as well as punish whichever diamond she felt was responsible. It almost comes across as if blue, yellow, and also pink, even though she isn't really around at this point, all have roles to fulfill, and they're not roles imposed by themselves. They're roles imposed by someone else, just like they impose roles upon the gems within their courts. In short, to summarize, just to make sure all you guys are caught up with what I'm saying, I think that it's at the very least possible that blue and yellow diamond are not as bad as they seem. That while, again, they're still pretty bad, they have been shoved into mandatory roles just like every other gem by White Diamond and therefore are in danger of White Diamond's wrath just like all of the gems beneath them are in danger of their wrath. Their harsh actions towards gems that step out of line are a desperate action taken to prevent White Diamond from becoming involved in the situation, harming them, and possibly even harming more gems under their control. If this is true, then I think it's very possible that Blue and Yellow Diamond might be receptive if Steven shows them a better way of going about things, and even more importantly, shows them that it is possible to stand up to White. And one way or another, if any of this is even half true, I do think that we'll get confirmation of it, or at least more evidence of it, in the upcoming four-part finale to the Diamond Days event. Again, I want to reiterate one final time that I'm not saying that Blue and Yellow are good people, I'm just saying that they seem to be written like people, and that their motivations might be deeper than we think. But as per usual guys, I'd like to know, what do you think of this theory? Let's get a discussion going in the comments section down below, or over on my Discord, link in the description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.